All right, David, it's yours. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, the communications committee meeting, Monday, uh, Friday, March first, about nine oh four a.m. And um, this will uh, get right into our first order of business, which is the approval of minutes. So, um, if I can get a mo if no changes, if I can get a motion to approve our February second meeting minutes. I move that we approve the February second meeting minutes. All right, second. Uh, second. Excellent. So that order of business is done. Next is a discussion regarding public comment and responses to email communication from the public received by the board. So this really should be the final uh, piece for us as a committee. Um, last time we met with Jessica, uh, the attorney, she gave us some potential draft language that we could be using uh, for emails and for public comment. And then we went back to her with, I think, a couple of minor changes. She sent us back essentially what should be a final draft that was included in our agenda. So um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that, but we can uh, maybe take a look at that quickly and just kind of talk about what the next steps are. Yeah, I had a chance to take a look at it. I, I'm pretty good with it. I don't think I have much to to, uh, to add. I think it looks pretty good and comprehensive and thorough. I don't mean to short change the conversation, but one point of clarification, David, just so I know, uh, given that it's in the agenda, it's posted, it's submitted by Jessica, we are able to discuss that now, correct, live? But we yeah. can't necessarily like just go about redrafting it right now or something like that, but we can discuss it, correct? Yeah, what we can do is we can discuss it. It's in, it's essentially it's in the public forum at this point. Right. Um, so if we want to make any changes to it, absolutely we can. What Jessica was saying uh, the first time was if there was something egregiously different from what our intent was mm -hmm. and we published it, we can't then take it back. Yeah. So okay. we can make any changes. Uh, so, yeah, so, Chad, if there are things that we want to, uh, to look at, any changes at all? It just simply it's a, it, it would that's not a problem at all. We can yeah. we can make those changes. I'm happy to look through it. I don't have too many concerns about those, so I'm going to pass the baton off to others in the call <laughs> if there are concerns. I don't have too many. I didn't have any concerns. I, I looked through it. The only question that I have is specifically the statement that we're making before public statement, um, which I think is a wonderful idea. It's lengthy. So is that something that Steve is going, or the chair is going to read every time, or is that something that Jody's going to read prior to public statement? How does that, how have we decided that that's best to move forward? I mean, it's probably not something I really have decided on probably as a group, but my feeling would be procedural procedurally, I would defer to Lisa or Jody. It seems to me like it is lengthy. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to shorten it, but we do, I don't. I think we have our regular board of ed att attendees, right? There's usually, you know, three or four people we can probably pick out of the crowd who are regulars, and then we have attendees who come because there's a topic on the agenda that's important to them. Okay. So I don't know if, you know, I, I don't. Jody, what are your thoughts? Like, I would think you would be the person to read it, quite honestly, because you're kind what of. What I did at the last meeting was I had something on the table that I put down. Um, and then it could also be posted as part of public comment on the agenda so that when people look at our agenda, they see it there. And I can reference and it could be referenced that way for everybody. I think that that's good. But I think that we um, I, I don't think everybody looks at the specifics in the agenda. And I think that if we really want this to come out, I think it needs to be said at the meeting. Yeah. I think it should be, look, I, I'm always one to argue for conciseness and brevity. I think this is one of the rare times in which that's actually not the most paramount concern, which is, I think it helps actually to hear that level of detail. Like these are all the reasons why this is the policy as it is. All in that will take, I don't know, probably two minutes, two minutes and 15 seconds to read. And given that public comment, many meetings actually doesn't take up that much time because we don't have that much public comment. I think it's a good use of our time. And I think part of the, the the actual like length and comprehensiveness is partly the point to demonstrate how thoroughly we've thought about this. So I think we can add two minutes to our typically three hour long meetings without being too concerned about uh, people losing attention. So what, what about the, go ahead, David, sorry. 
or at least I was gonna say I wish you just read through it and just see about <clears throat> if it's a two minute read. Yeah. And then it's, it seems like Steve would be the person that would uh, make the statement. Um, I guess he he moves us through the agenda. Um, if I may, remember, we can't decide anything here. This is a subcommittee. So I think we can recommend um, what our recommendations are. I agree we need to put it in writing everywhere we can on the website, mm -hmm. on the uh, handout at the thing. But remember, we're not in person. Oh, no, right. we are in person in March, aren't we? Yeah, we have another in person to get it out. And I think that we need to recommended our committee meeting but in the meanwhile uh, you know somebody can touch base with steve maybe you can david about a particular part of it to <coughs> move it forward if yeah. steve is hesitant to do it i mean would what does the committee I, think about you know maybe david you're as the chair of the communications committee i, I think if anybody does it it should be steve sorry to okay. interrupt and no, I no, that's okay. that what would be great is if it becomes so part of the culture that we don't have to keep reading it, you know, to keep reading it, to get it out there, to put it out, to, you know, even say, and remember, reference our policy on public comment, which is here, you know, and that kind of thing. But I think that um, I agree. They have to be reminded. They have to understand the why. Um, the other thing we can do is we can blast it out to all the families. We can ask it to be blasted out to the, um, through the board. Uh, of selectmen, like here's an update on whatever, you know, whatever we want, because a lot, many times it's people that are from the public that, that don't have children necessarily in the schools that want to comment. So I think it has to be kind of a multifaceted approach. I think so too, but I also think- Respectfully disagreeing on that in the following way, Lisa, which is I agree it'd be great to make people aware of this, but I just have a very low estimate of how many emails actually get read closely. Mm -hmm and how many times people actually look at any kind of agenda. And if you think about the number of things that we do in a school board meeting that are ultimately day review or standard lengthy, like approval of minutes, approval of minutes, do I have a motion for it, whatever. I actually think that the goal of this, especially given how much time we spent on it with Jessica's help, is that this is just part of the bones of how we run these meetings. We just speak it out loud each time because a bunch of times people are brand new. They show up and they're like, oh, I've never been here. And what are we no, doing? No, I know. I, I wasn't saying in lieu of, I'm yeah. just saying in addition to. Oh, in addition to. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Quite yeah. frankly, when someone says something to me like, well, I didn't know like yeah. well, about something, I can say, well, it okay. was emailed to you, this, this, yeah. this, it was posted here, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying in lieu of. Yeah, no, not in lieu of. Good. Yeah, I think multifaceted approach is a really a great idea, but uh, I think also every meeting, when when people come to these meetings, a lot of times if they're making a public comment, it's, well, not a lot of times, 100% of the time when they're making a public comment, it's emotionally charged. And when they are making emotionally charged decisions, they may not, they are not going to like read through the like public speaking, public comment policy and things like that. I really think that we need to read it at every meeting. And, and and to that point, well, well a couple of things. So just so we're we're kind of moving in the right direction, I think it was determined from our meeting with Jessica, we would not adopt this as a policy. What we would be doing at our committee level is making a recommendation to the board of ed that yeah. we use this as guidance, um, and that essentially uh, it's guidance. All seven board of ed members essentially agree to it, and then if the board of ed, you know, if a member changes, we just let that new board of ed member know this is tradition this is what we do but but it's not going to become a policy um, yes it's how you conduct business right right and maybe what we do to chad's point is you know the last thing we really want to do is have it create a chilling effect right we want just the opposite it's more of trying to have the community understand why it is we don't engage it's not that we don't want to engage it's not that we're not hearing them it's not that uh we don't take what they're saying to heart there's there's parameters and guidelines right that so Maybe what we do is when we um, send this over to, well, actually, I guess really, Jody, this would, when we're done today, we would ask that this become an agenda item of discussion at the March meeting. Um, and maybe what we simply do is we share what Jessica has given us and we recommend that at the start of each Board of Ed meeting or during the public comment piece, Steve. You know, I just quickly looked at it. If Steve reads just basically the first sentence of the first uh, of the three, and and we can go through it now quickly. It, Jessica basically tells the, in the first sentence of first item, second item, third item, she sort of says the why. Then she goes into more of an example. 
So we could do an abbreviated version of the why and not go into the more wordy part of the example. Um, if that makes any sense, if you look at the way she's laid it out on page Yeah, on page four, she's got, she's got about four paragraphs there. Right. So if we, for example, if Steve started out with the first item, uh, you know, first he explains why, you know, we, you know, the, the, the first paragraph on the, sorry, the, the two paragraphs on the pre previous page, and then the the next page, first engaging in this discussion on non-gen items could violate uh, the board's obligations or FOIA. Second, the board of the board or administration may not be prepared to discuss certain matters raised in the first instance by by a public comment, and leave it at that. Third, the board develops its meeting agenda carefully. So rather than going into reading the whole paragraph, if Steve feels like it's too wordy, and he, you know, I, I don't. It doesn't look to me like it's more. I think to Chad's point, it's probably about a two minute read. Um, so if but if Steve's a if, if Steve thinks it's too much to read, what are your thoughts, Chad? You're you're a really good public speaker, so. But but you don't know how to use. You, you're, you're still muted out. though. <laughs> I feel like I was getting both complimented and insulted at the same time, which I think both are fair. By the way. <laughs> both are fair. I'll take both of those compliment and the insult. I think we're overthinking this ever so slightly, which is that. We've spent a lot of these committee meetings, which, by the way, this doesn't always happen. We've come to a pretty good result. Everyone seems to be pretty much on board, pretty happy with it. We've paid Jessica some money, I'm sure, to spend time doing this and coming up with his language. And I don't think it's actually all that much time. Like, I think we should probably just read it each time. And let's say a year from now, we're all like, oh, my God, I cannot sit through another one of those things. Then maybe a year from now, we evaluate trimming it a little bit. But it seems to me the cleanest just to suggest we adopt this advance of the whole board and see what they say. Because if we talk about Steve's preference for editing a few sentences, wouldn't we theoretically have to get approval for the trimmed version of this as well? You know, so I'm like, why not just advance it as is? I don't I don't think if we're if we're just pushing this along as a um, recommendation of board etiquette, if you will, it's not a policy. We don't need yep. to bring it back to committee and things like that if we're going to edit it. If yeah. Steve if Steve decides he wants to skip a paragraph, he can skip a paragraph. It wouldn't be within our best interest for him to do that. But I mean, if he's reading this, well, the reality is, you know, it doesn't require any sort of modification or, or approval of yeah. modification. So that's why I, I think I know, it's the cleanest. Let's just recommend you just read the statement. Well, I know what Steve wants. What? Steve. Well, if we look at page three of what Jessica sent us, uh, it says exactly statement regarding public comment. She said that I shared the draft with Steve, who would be responsible for reading it, uh -huh. determine who's going to read it, and that Steve, in paraphrasing here, thinks it's lengthy and doesn't necessarily want to read the whole well, thing. I think we could propose <laughs> um, the edited version. I agree, like that big long thing in paragraph two doesn't have to go, and say that you can certainly say the committee's recommendation is to read it. Yeah. There is one change I want, though. What's that? It's a small change, but I, I think it's important. Last paragraph. Reach out directly to Superintendent Barbiero or the appropriate members of the administration. I, I want them to just reach out to me, and then I can direct them. Because what's happening is sometimes people are reaching out to people in our administration who are not might not know some of the background that I know or aren't the exact person and it's not good you should it, 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 it's it, more you know like oh yeah okay blah 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 and it's like wait a minute like uh no that's not right well or more importantly lisa it, it helps i more need importantly, to know what the concerns are that's exactly right that's the that's the bigger issue we want to make sure that as a superintendent you know what the concerns are and that you're able to send it to the appropriate person as opposed to the appropriate person getting it and you having never been made aware of the concern. Well, exactly. And so when we meet with the principals, we meet with the administrative team, we meet every week as the central office, it, there might be, you know, collective minds saying, well, what about this or that? It, it's better. They, they will get a better response in the long run if it goes through me because, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
that's the only change I would because sometimes something about a building might have a bigger impact, like it might be an impact district wide that we need to consider. You know? <clears throat> Well, I think that seems perfectly sensible, Lisa, which yeah. suggests to Steve that he read the whole thing, you know, and then we take out that one section. And it seems to me like we're good to go with that. By the way, looking at this, Chad, you as a public speaker know this as well. I don't think this is a two minute read. <laughs> yeah, I meant if he's belaboring it, you know, yeah. like you're going <laughs> slowly on it and it will get faster, too, as he gets better at it. So, yeah, no, I don't think that this is a two minute read. OK, I'm going to I'm going to. Uh, raise something else here too while we're talking about public comment <clears throat> because I think that a lot of people you know they want to be in attendance for public comment and we put public comment at the beginning of all of our meetings which I think we did um, out of respect for everyone's time so they could come to the meeting and be heard kind of early on but at the same time I think that we're also getting some conflict and this might be something that we might want to discuss at the next board meeting we're getting some um, conflict from folks who are saying it's really tough to get there at six o'clock and you know, I've looked around and there are a lot of board meetings that start at seven o'clock. But, you know, again, we've all been sitting in the library until 10, 1030 at night. And that's a long, long day. So rather than um, starting the meeting later, we have a lot of procedural stuff that we could start. If we started at six o'clock, we have a lot of procedural stuff and reports that we could probably get out of the way and then schedule public comment for a specific time, maybe schedule public comment for seven o'clock, which makes it more reasonable for people to attend. <clears throat> If I may, yes. the topic of the board start time, I believe is going to be on the agenda, correct, Jody? There was a member of the community that raised it that wanted it in February. Yeah. That we couldn't do it in February. And Steve said that we would discuss it in March. So I don't mean to cut you off. No, it's great. Something during that time we can talk about. Yep. I think that that's great. Actually, um, I think Bernie and I just had a side conversation at the last board meeting about the lengthiness of it. And she actually was the one who suggested that maybe we front load the meeting with a lot of, because it is, you know, she's a teacher. She has to be up and at work early as well. So, um, and we don't want to make our meetings go until 11 o'clock. Um, well, I mean, I don't know about you, but my volunteer pay is just not enough for it. So <laughs> um, we'd rather get out of there at a reasonable hour, but at the same time, we also want to make it as convenient as possible for the public to participate in these meetings if they choose to. And saying, you know, having, if we start a meeting at six o'clock, a lot of times we have our public comment that starts at about 6.15, I'll say, or, you know, and that's, that's tough if you're coming back from New York City or, you know, if you're trying to do it. So anyway, that's just my, that's just around public comment. I don't want to go off topic here, but that's just around public comment, something for us as board members to think about and take then to the general meeting on the 12th. Yeah, this actually segues into two quick items. Um, but let me ask back, back up for one, one quickie. So I'm going to email Jessica um, the revision that Lisa asked for on page three, paragraph four, which is basically to remove the or the appropriate member of the administration. So I don't think you, I don't think you need to do that, David. That's okay. just going to rack up legal costs. Later. So, but we probably want to get a, then maybe ask Jody. Would you mind asking if we have a copy of this document in? Word format that we can edit. Otherwise, we can just edit the PDF. I do. You, know, you know okay. what? I'm arranging a call with Jessica today about something else. So, in the, I can certainly um, bring it up to her and share it quickly. Kind of. I, okay. I'm always very conscious of combining topics to save money. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have to. But talk this just her. this just seems like such it's a just simple an edit. and common I can, sense. I can mention it to her. Yes. yes. But if Jody has the Word version of it, then. If, mm -hmm. if Jody, well, I'll email you the minor modification, sure. if you can just edit the Word document sure. so it's reflective in our, and then Dan, I know I should know the answer to this question as an IT person. What is our, we do have a Board of Ed distribution email address, right? Yes. What, for you. Well, for, yes, for you to use, you could just email the, the board, type in Board of Education, yeah. and there's a distribution list that comes up automatically. Is that extra? So in the same paragraph that we're talking about editing, it says you may also email the board of it at our email address, which implies that there's like a distribution address. Is there? Yep. It's the same one. Oh, and what mm -hmm. is that? WPS hat hyphen. Uh, hang on. Let me see. Hold on. I, if you can get it done rather quickly, Jody, because I, we're trying to schedule this meeting with Jessica. looks like it's going to be about 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> at westonps.org. There you go. Board of Education at westernps.org. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll email this to you, Jody. Obviously, double check it for accuracy. Okay. 
All right. So the other two quick things related to what Sharon just brought up is, um, Dan, you and I had talked about this. I think at our at our March meeting, in addition to the six or seven o'clock start time, there were people asking about why we are still meeting remotely versus always in person. Is that on the agenda as well? That March? was that was part of it. Yeah. yeah. It was start time of the meeting and in person meeting. Right. Okay, so what I had talked to Dan about briefly was if he, we know, I think with Chad, I'm not sure if you're on the board at the time, but we looked at why, you know, attendance, availability of families to join Board of Ed meetings when they're remote, the, quite frankly, the convenience for the community, if they just want to listen in while they're sitting on 95 trying to get from Stanford to Weston. So, uh, Dan, I don't know if you had a chance yet, but I asked Dan if he could pull up some statistics about, for example, meeting attendance, because certainly um, the general feeling was we get higher attendance when we're remote. And I think the other related question, which I'm pretty sure I know the answer to, but Dan, I don't know if you know it for certain, or Jody, we as a board, the regular board of ed uh, are not, if we're meeting in person, uh, we are not obligated to broadcast it live, nor are we obligated to record it. Correct. Right. So, and I think that's an important distinction because uh, somebody once called me out for being like, well, you want to do the minimum possible. No, that's not just the inverse. I'm trying to show you that we're doing more than the minimum. But I think it's an important piece to remember <laughs> is that we are, when we meet in person, there is no obligation to stream it. And there is no obligation to record it. Right. So, yeah, Dan, I don't know if you have any, like, statistics today or if you can just get some ready for our meeting that would show uh, how many people watch it afterwards. Because that that is something that wouldn't happen if we were in person all the time um, as a matter of, of procedure, right? So I don't have concrete numbers for you now, but the numbers I'm gathering are a couple. So it's when we have an in-person meeting, how many public comment or people who are there for not for like an accolade, right? So how many people who are there and how, um, how long they stay for? And then uh, for remote meetings, how many people are remote watching in either the webinar or the YouTube and how long they stay and how long they stay connected to the remote meeting and also how many people are connected remotely when we're in person. So it's not just, I'm just trying to see not just how many people attend the meeting, but how long they stay for the meeting. That's key. That's key. Right. As well as can you, um, how many people end up watching the, um, the recording afterwards? Can you get that? And how much of the recording they watch? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. All those, all those uh, analytics are, are part of YouTube. So Awesome. I'll get all that information. Yep. Yeah. I mean, listen, if it if it comes back where statistically we're going to get a better reach by having in-person meetings, then we'll have in-person meetings. If it comes back that statistically we have a better reach by having the hybrid model, which I think is, I mean, David, you and I were part of this when this was the belief, then we'll stick with that. I'd rather not go back into completely remote. And I don't think we can because we've got recognitions and things like that that we like to do. But anyway, all right. I think that yeah. that's great. We're going to have that information to share with the board. I think it was intent. The intent, you know, there's a couple of people in the community, I think, who think that there is some reason that we're not meeting in person. And it's there. the only reason would be the reason that we have data to prove, which is that we get better attendance. Yeah. The, and the video, the last piece I was going to bring up was, and we looked at, there's no question the video and audio quality when we are using Zoom or Google Meets is significantly better than when we meet in person. So I think, I feel like Dan, once before, at least for our committee, you kind of created a quick juxtaposition about maybe a 30 second video clip of uh, yeah. an in-person meeting with the cameras at the middle school and a 30 second clip, you know, whatever would be appropriate of a board of ed meeting using Zoom. And maybe you can kind of fast forward the way, you know, Zoom also highlights the speaker. Yeah, uh, I think I think it's important to let the community know what the video quality differences are and then finally put the bow around it, which we did look at Sharon um, a couple years ago, the cost to upgrade the equipment in the middle school 
to get a, a better video uh, experience for remote people. I think if I remember correctly, Dan, we were looking at north of sixty thousand dollars. It was sixty thousand dollars to re to replace the microphone system and the audio and the video system, and that was <laughs> tying in the projector into our TriCaster, which is what broadcasts our live meetings. Because when it comes down to it, when we're presenting a document at an in-person meeting, it is horrible on the live stream because it's just a 15 year old analog camera pointed at the projector and you can't make a word out. But we point, I have the guys point it there anyways, so they can kind of see what we're seeing, but it's actually presentations are much more clear when we do Zoom meetings. And, and, it, and it comes back to, did the Board of Ed spend upwards of $60,000 to replace equipment? And at that point, the answer was it was not worth it. We had other priorities that needed to be taken care of first. And so that's kind of where, where we landed at that point. I, I think that that was still the solid decision, to be honest with you. And and if people, like if they, you know, they, they have access to the information as part of the agenda, they can have it and looking at it during the presentation, or they can attend in person. I don't think that spending $60,000 just so that we have clear screens on um, on a recording or, uh, you know, for a remote session is really kind of, I think it's not a good use of our funds. Um, and the other thing too, when we're looking at this, Dan, is um, the number of people, and hopefully you have this information. So when we do public comment in person, we know how many people are making public comment. Um, when we do them remote, if you could give us a number of, on, you know, an average number of people that make public comment during our Zoom meetings, that would be actually pretty helpful as well. Um, because again, the whole reason is we want to make sure that people have access and remind them, we have to remind people that if we're doing in-person meetings and they're not there in person, they don't have the ability to make a public comment. And, and, and to couple off of that, and I was telling David this at the last board meeting, there have been times where people have made public comments and they thanked us because they were able to make public comments yeah. because the meeting was virtual because they were sitting in their car at their daughter's softball practice. Yeah. Yeah. Which, so otherwise, if we had had it in person, they would not have been able to make the meeting. Right. So that's there. there and so, you know, I, I'm not I, I don't have the concrete numbers, but I will tell you at first glance, there is no significant difference. And it's actually we end up with less viewership, both in person and virtual when we have in person meetings versus virtual meetings. We end up having more people watch and we have more people watch and stay for longer. OK. All right. I think the essential thing in this go on public comment. What's that? Sorry, Jody. I can get you the information on the public comment by going back through the minutes. Thank yeah. you. That'd be great. I'm sure. I think this is an example where I think the solution we're already at is an entirely sensible one, which is essentially a compromise. Like in remote, in person, remote, in person gets the advantages you can. It's not a perfect solution, but it's about as ideal as we can get to. And I think the essential thing is wherever we find end up with this information that we do a good job communicating to the public. The reason we're doing this it's not because we have some nefarious plan to stay away from you, <laughs> but rather this is a cadence. It's the best solution for the most people. And if you prefer the in-person, you got six of those years to show up at. So thank you so much for your input. Keep trucking. <laughs> yeah, no, and Chad, you're hundred percent right. And that was the reason we went to the hybrid model yeah. is it, it. And really I think what we have to do is we have to find out what problem are we trying to solve, right? That's always the question. You, you, you know, as, as the saying uh, goes, right? You can make some of the people happy all the time. You can please all the people some of the time, but you can't please yeah. all the people all of the time. Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to what problem are we truly solving? And yeah. I think, you know, we'll go in open-minded and open-eared, so to speak. But I think, you've, to, I believe it was Sharon's point, and I had brought it up as well, uh, being remote actually gives access to that community member who's sitting on 95 in traffic trying to get from Stanford to West. And I can tell you, I've missed a couple of ATBM meetings because, you know, if you're not there exactly when they start, it's over. And I was in traffic trying to hustle my kid from, you know, a baseball game to the high school. And it's just like, crap, it's over. So I think we just have to really find out from the community what problem are we trying to solve? And if they don't come to the meeting, which happens to be in person in March, <laughs> and tell us the problem that we, we need to solve, then we're going to have to use a combination of 
the data that Dan's going to present us, the information Jody has, and the reality that the video quality is better. And you know, one other thing we haven't really talked about is our own availability. I mean, if you think about how many times the three of us have tuned in and participated in a meeting remotely, uh, that's a benefit to the community, especially if the community feels passionately, you know, for example, Chad, your position on an issue, they align with. Well, if we are only in person and you are in Aspen skiing and... <laughs> Lucky Chad. <laughs> I like that it's Aspen. That's nice. It's not even like Stratton. It's Aspen. Hey, right? hey, hey, hey. Don't go yeah. cracking on Stratton. By the oh, way, sorry, sorry, sorry. Skiing, it's not just Thunder Ridge. It's Aspen. I appreciate if, that. If you want to go skiing, go to Tahoe. They're expecting, you ready for this, five to ten feet of snow yeah. right now. Yeah. They're going to close the ski lifts. <laughs> no, thank you. Too much snow? Too much. Oh. Anyway, I, I sorry, Dave. When you guys all go north, I go south. Um, <laughs> I'm but, with you. Know, yeah, right, Lisa. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> okay, um, but to that point, you know, it is a valid thing to consider that, right? Again, if Chad, if you are aligned with a community member or community members on an issue, and you, we are only in person and you are out of town, you've tuned in. Sharon's tuned in. I've tuned in as well. So this isn't really about uh, convenience for us as much as it's, I think. It's important that you have as many meetings as you can where the seven of us can participate with seven potentially different um, thoughts and ideas at the meeting. So, yeah, let's see who shows. I guess, you know, to round it out, let's see who shows up in March to tell us that we should only be meeting in person. And that, <laughs> I'll be right there, should be a pretty good indication of, uh, of it versus, you know, Dan can probably, mo you can monitor in real time who's tuning in, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, I think we're getting away from the communications now. <laughs> so let's get back to our, our agenda, because I know, Lisa, you have a hard stop coming up here because you're meeting with uh, Jessica. Correct. Um, but I think, I mean, as far as the agenda is concerned, sorry, David, I don't mean to, like, hijack here. <laughs> no, go ahead. You're doing a great job of it. Anytime. Um, no, but I'm just thinking, uh, <laughs> you know how wives speak for their husbands, right, David? Yes. <laughs> David has dubbed me his board of ed wife because we fight in public. <laughs> well, we had a drink together Wednesday night. We did. Um, anyway. In, in Weston. <laughs> we, didn't, was, we didn't leave town. We were nervous that another board of ed member was going to wander into the lunchbox and we'd have a quorum. <laughs> we're like, no, stay out. <laughs> anyway, back to the back to the agenda, though. Um, I think that we're okay with just making that small tweak and then bringing it to the board for, for the, the meeting to see if, we, if they want to adopt it as – Good, uh, good communication hygiene. <laughs> yeah. So I will email Jody uh, just so you have it, the the text. Obviously, fix it, and then we will ask or have it added to the agenda for the board of Ed meeting in March. Discuss it. Try and adopt it as guidance rather than policy. And then <clears throat> um, Dan will bring with him the data on the public comment piece, and the account will go from there. Sounds good. So with that, the only minor, it probably doesn't, I just to make sure this is correct, Jody, the next agenda item talks about our next scheduled meeting of the policy committee. So I assume it's a typo. We are meeting, it's communication April 5th or? I'm so or, or sorry. Least, I know Sharon probably wanted to plug in there for her committee. <laughs> Absolutely. Now she's hijacking my agendas as well. <laughs> that was a clone on a motion. <laughs> Thank you, Jody, for the uh, for the plug. <laughs> so tune in to the policy committee meeting. So exciting! <laughs> it's going to be a real sleeper. But no. Uh, so are we. So before we close out, just so that we know, is it communication April? Is the date correct? Just the wording. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So our next meeting is April fifth. April fifth at nine a.m. So with that, can I get a motion to adjourn? I so move. I second. All right, everyone. See you in person. Bye, Bye guys. Have a great Bye. day. Bye-bye. Hey, wait. Oh, I'm here. Okay. Go ahead and fill her in real quick. Jody, yeah. I need to Are we still recording? That. Hold on just a moment. Let me close everything out. <laughs> I think they forgot.